Welcome to St. Mary's in the Valley Episcopal Church from Ramona, California. My name is Phil Cook. I'm the vicar of St. Mary's. Today, uh, we have the comforting words of St. Paul in his epistle to the Roman Church, assuring us that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And for us today, nothing means COVID-19 and also our current social unrest and our challenge to bring equal justice and opportunity to all of our citizens. And if we are feeling unemployed in having to shelter in place, remember that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who uses us to pray through us with the deep sighs for our world. And so let us continue to offer our words of prayer as we experience prayer as our continuous occupation. Thank you for joining us in our liturgy today. We hope that our liturgy will be a blessing for you. begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, 
You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept him, for him, this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, and who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136. Your decrees are wonderful. Therefore, I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant. I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no inequity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. A reading from the book of Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put another parable before them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is no old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Teachers and parents tell their toddlers and preschoolers to use your words, calm down. And this is a diversion technique because kids from sheer instinct use their body language, words to hit, to bite, to scream, and to show all manner of frustrated chaos. Calm down, calm down, use your words. But we know that just using words should not give us license to use our words in terrible ways. We have lots of public figures using their words all of the time and some in bad ways, meant to hurt other people. One could say that the coming of the Torah, the law of Moses given to humanity, was God's way of saying to humanity, use your words. You cannot just live from impulse to impulse. You need to have some words that provide the very best recommended behaviors to bring order and impulse control to our lives. You need the language of the law to train your body language to do the very best 
deeds for living. And just because humanity was given the good words of the law, it did not mean successful behaviors prevailed in the lives of God's people. They often forgot. They needed to be reminded continually to use their words, God's words, in good and right behaviors. What do we call using good words in political governance, in political discourse? When Solomon became king of Israel after David, he made a prayer to God and he asked God for good judgment and wisdom in governing the people. He asked for discernment between good and evil on behalf of his people. And certainly, this is what all political leadership needs. Wisdom to serve people with profound discernment. If Israel was supposed to be the kingdom of heaven on earth, under their kings, we know that it certainly failed. The kings and the people were all too human. In the time of Jesus, one might say that the words of the law, the words of the Torah, were not that successful throughout the world at large. Why? Because in actual practice, they became the way in which an oppressed and occupied nation of people kept their separate identity. The words, the good words of the law became the words which kept Jews living throughout the world of the Roman Empire maintaining a very separate identity. How could God's best words be shared and given to the entire world if they were locked within a very small community of people to keep them as separate as possible, like perhaps the Amish are in our country today. God's word came into a different kind of mission in Jesus Christ. The written words of God of the Torah were in their practice not successful enough to enough people to satisfy a more universal mission for humanity. John's gospel proclaimed that the word was in the beginning of human life as we know it. And that word was with God. And the word was God. And the word did not just become writing. The word became flesh in the person of Jesus. And Jesus spoke words. And his words were spirit and life. And many of his words came in the form of parables and metaphors about the kingdom of heaven. The nuance of the realm of heaven that can be known in our human and earthly experience. What do earthly 
kings and presidents need and want. They want to make a big flashy show. They want and need popularity. They seek popularity for their own legitimacy. But what did Jesus say about God's heavenly kingdom? God's heavenly kingdom is a cumulative subtle it's like a tiny mustard seed insignificant if kept alone and unplanted but when it is planted it slowly takes over the landscape the kingdom of heaven is the accumulation of each deed of faith and kindness which grows to become a knowable presence of God's uncanny love and goodness. Don't worry about the big show of your faith. Do the small deeds, one by one, kindness upon kindness, and know that the survival of the world actually happens because the world is supported by the hidden scaffold of all of those small deeds of kindness done by people who don't do things for the show of things or for politics or for money or for power. Believe in the profound preserving effect of this hidden and subtle kingdom of kindness. We love bread. Leaven and yeast is small and tiny, but with a little time, it can cause a lump of dough to double, triple, and quadruple. That's what the kingdom of heaven's like. It's why we can still be smelling something like the fresh, yeasty bread out of the oven in the midst of the woes of this world of war, fighting, injustice, and pandemic. Why? Because the aroma of the kingdom of heaven calls out the winsome normalcy of health, of life, of liberty, happiness, and kindness. The suffering in this world seems so severe because the aroma of the kingdom of heaven is so wonderful. And we as people need to follow the wonderful aroma of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven involves having the wisdom to sort out our lives in retrospect. We haul in the experience of the occasions of our life and we sort them out. We sort out the meanings and values that we have lived and we retain what is worthy and we discard what is unworthy. Even things that are unworthy that we have loved and been, become habitual for us, we sort them out. The kingdom of heaven is the promise of the ultimate success of justice and clarity about our human experience. The success in being able to justly sort out our lives in the future. The kingdom of heaven is like having delicious insider information 
It's like going to the bazaar or the garage sale and finding a gold mine for but a dime because the seller really doesn't know the value of what seems to be so ordinary. The kingdom of heaven is akin to finding supreme value in the middle of what seems to be so natural and ordinary. It is to find the deep groaning and sighing of the Holy Spirit within oneself. This spirit coexisting with our lives, surviving everything that can possibly happen to us. And experience the seeming impossible. The experience of feeling loved by Christ through the presence of God's Spirit as we face everything in life and death. Further, the kingdom of heaven is the discovery of the gift of finding something so important that it is worth living for and dying for. For me, the value of the word as God is the supreme value discovered because I know that it will accompany everything that I will ever do, be, know, speak, and write. A person who knows the kingdom of heaven is the person who has discovered the telling value of one's life, which is the image of God upon one's life. And to some, all of these parables up, Jesus tells us that the kingdom of heaven is knowing how to use our words best by being good scribes. What is a scribe? A scribe is a writer. Writing is the expression of facility in using words in the very best way. Not just being literate and being able to scribble characters upon the page or being able to read them. A scribe of the kingdom is one who has learned to use one's words the best. And how does one do that? By each person seeking to be this scribe of the kingdom of heaven. The one who strives to find one's unique voice to live to speak, to write, and to behave the wonderful kinds of values of the kingdom of heaven. And to do it as it can only be done through each person's unique gifts. In the Hebrew tradition of the Torah, the Torah was regarded to be a living word tradition. Why? Because the Torah traveled through time. And the Torah had to be interpreted again and again to new situations. The work of interpretation as scribes of the kingdom of heaven is to bring forth the treasures of the kingdom to the people in our lives. Jesus Christ, as the living word of God, commissions you and me to be scribes of the kingdom of heaven, becoming totally literate 
in this kingdom of heaven. You and I have been given the risen Christ as the word who is God within us. We are to be the scribes of the kingdom of heaven, learning to use our best words in saying, in teaching, in doing the kind deeds of God's love, justice, and kindness to all. May God give us the grace to be wise scribes of the kingdom of heaven as we do the work of interpreting all of the words of our lives so that we can bring forth the goodness of what is both old and new. And you know what? Love, justice, and kindness are always old and they are always new. So let these be our best use of our words today. Amen. The Nicene Creed continues on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now to the people for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Lest the word of God return empty to the heavens, let us turn our hearts to the needs of others and plant the seeds of justice, saying, in mercy, hear us. For the Christian churches throughout the world, that together we may harvest compassion in an abundance of mercy. We pray, in, in mercy, mercy, hear us. us. That leaders of government refuse to worship Mars, the god of war, but rather attend to Christ's call of peace, we pray, in mercy, in mercy hear, hear us. us. For farmers, harvesters, and migrant workers, and for an end of injustice towards those who work the land, we pray, in, in mercy, mercy, hear us that people of the earth may honor and respect the natural resources of the planet and for an end to the consumerism that encourages ravage, we pray. In mercy, in mercy hear, hear us. us. For the catechumens in our communities, that fertile in faith, they may, may be a soil rich in receptivity, we pray. In, in mercy, mercy, hear us. us. For all the sick and for all the oppressed, that the reign of God will hold sway in all human life, we pray. In, in mercy, mercy, hear us. We have a new name to add to our prayer list. We, praise, we pray for the repose of the soul of Steve Barringer, who is a friend of Maurice's. And at this time, if you have any intentions you would like to add, I continue to pray for my mother.
Blessed and praised are you, O God, for the word of your mouth. In your mercy, listen to all who call to you in faith. Let your word find root in our lives. We pray in the name of your child, Jesus, who lives with you in the power of the Spirit forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thy kingdom come on bended knee, the passing ages pray, and faithful souls have on earth and kingdom's day But the slow watches of the night Not less to God belong And for the everlasting light The silent stars are strong All wrong shall stand revealed When justice shall be throned in might And every hurt be healed When knowledge hand in hand with peace Shall walk the earth abroad Day of perfect righteousness, the promised day of God. Praise God from right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth through jesus christ our lord who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who will forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy Eucharist continues on page 367. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made to, known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name. 
66 with our post communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food, the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God passes all understanding. Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Oh, people, look around you. 
signs are everywhere You've left it for somebody other than you To be the one to care You're lost inside your houses There's no time to find you now While your walls are burning And your towers are turning Gonna leave you here Try to get down to the sea somehow The road is filled with homeless souls Every woman, child, and man Who have no idea where they will go But they'll help you if they can Now everyone must have some thought gonna pull them through somehow While the fires are raging hotter and hotter But the sisters of the sun are gonna rock me on the water now Rock me on the water Sister, will you soothe my fevered brow Rock me on the water I'll get down to the sea Get down to the sea somehow Stand before the Father But the sisters of the Son Are gonna rock me on the water now Rock me on the water Sister, will you soothe my fevered brow? Rock me on the water Maybe I'll remember Maybe I remember how Rock me on the water And I'll get down to the sea I'll get down to the sea somehow 